Because the Bible says what? Without holiness, no one will see God. Without holiness, no one will see God. Purity of heart, being pure in heart is holiness. Because when we are pure in our hearts, we'll be pure in our lives. So Christ is reminding us again that blessed are those who are pure in their hearts, who are holy, who are walking righteously, not through their own strength, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he's saying that those who are like that, that they will see God. And those who live in peace will be known as the children of God. Perhaps the most difficult one is when the Lord says to us, blessed are we when we are persecuted for his sake and for righteousness sake. In fact, he tells us to rejoice and to be glad. He says, rejoice and be glad in the face of persecution because great is our reward in heaven. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, we see a similar encouragement. And it says to us, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Our light and momentary troubles. Our light and momentary troubles, the persecutions, the trials, the tribulations. What Paul is saying here is that those things are achieving for us. All right? They are getting us closer towards an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Meaning that what awaits us, what is waiting for us in eternity, what is waiting for us when we meet the Lord one day in paradise, what is waiting for us is far more beautiful, far more profound, far more beneficial than whatever we go through in this life for the sake of Jesus. What the Lord has in store for us, the Bible says no ears has, no, no ears has heard, no eyes have seen, that we cannot even imagine. And so Christ says here, blessed are you when you face persecution for the sake of righteousness and for his own sake. But the interesting thing here is that if our world, if the world, if the culture had to give its own version of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, it would be very, very different. If the culture had to give its own version of this, of this message, it would be very, very different. And yet, the world's version of this sermon is what many, many live by and not God's version. The world's version of the sermon would be something more along the lines of this. Blessed are the rich and the famous. Blessed are the great and successful. Blessed are those who are prideful and arrogant. Blessed are those who look out only for themselves. Blessed are those who chase money and power and pleasure. Blessed are those who chase the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Why? For they shall inherit the treasures of the earth. That would be the world's version of the sermon. And tragically, without Jesus, that is all that they will inherit. Without Christ, the treasures of the earth is all that they will inherit. Because God's word tells us very clearly in Ecclesiastes 1, 1 to 2, that what? That all these things are nothing but vanity upon vanity. And also in 1 John 2, 17, the world and all its lust will pass away. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Those things are not from the Father, but we are told in the Scriptures that they are of the world. So if the world passes away one day, all these things will also pass away. But whoever does the will of God will live forever. But in contrast, we see that Jesus demonstrates to us real, true, concrete, eternal blessedness and the kind of people that we need to become in order to enjoy and to come into these precious promises of God or being comforted by God or being filled with righteousness of receiving mercy from God of seeing God of being called the child of God the children of God and ultimately of being with God in the kingdom of heaven one day 
This passage is the divine blueprint or the DNA or the character of a follower of Christ. And this divine blueprint or DNA is based on none other than the person of Jesus himself. In fact, what we see in this message, in this passage, is that Jesus not only encompasses the character of who we should be like, but he also encompasses the blessings that are there for those who pattern themselves and their lives and their hearts and their character after the nature of Jesus. So he, 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 he's, the, he's the blueprint, he's the DNA, he's the framework of the character of who we should be like, but also all those blessings are also found in and through Jesus alone. If you look at it and think about it, poverty of spirit or humility, meekness, righteousness, a merciful heart, purity of heart, being a peacemaker. Why? Because Jesus brought us peace between us and God. And also the total submission to persecution all exemplify the nature of Jesus. This is the nature of Jesus. Humility of spirit, meekness, righteousness, mercy, purity of heart, a peacemaker. And also, ultimately, he submitted himself totally to being nailed upon the cross, to persecution. So what we see here, what Christ describes here for us in Matthew 5, as the framework of who we should aspire to be like by the power of the Holy Spirit, is describing his own nature. 